For more information on tutoring or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So we mentioned that Schrodinger developed an equation, and it was specifically called Schrodinger's Wave Equation, which is actually shown here. Now this is kind of the simplified form. There are much more complicated versions of Schrodinger's Wave Equation, but this is the simplest form, and we don't really need to know all the details. Um, but here we have this little H with a little hat above it, and then we have the Greek letter Psi equals E times the Greek letter Psi. So what are these things, and what do they represent? The H with a hat above it is the Hamiltonian operator. And what that really is is just a bunch of math operations that for a general chemistry student, you really don't need to know all the details of. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't even know them. Um, they're not really important um, for general chemistry. Um, the E represents the atom's energy, and the symbol psi, the Greek letter psi, uh, represents a wave function. And a wave function describes an electron's location in 3D. And I put the word kinda here because it's not exactly like that. Okay, so there are a bunch of solutions to Schrodinger's wave equation. And these solutions are characterized by a wave function, psi. And that psi has those different solutions, those different wave functions, uh, have particular energy values. Now, if you're thinking about a specific wave function, a specific wave function is an atomic orbital. Okay. Now, a little note here. Some people hear that word, orbital, and they think orbit like in Bohr's model. And that is something you should not do. That They're very, very different things. When we talked about Bohr's model, we talked about an orbit being a very specific path around an atom's nucleus that an electron would travel, right? A very specific path. But we saw with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that we can't exactly know the location of an electron. So the idea that it travels in a, in a very specific path is not really something we could say. Um, so an atomic orbital instead actually is something very different, and it doesn't actually have a physical meaning, which is kind of weird. Okay, so that kind of brings me to this next point. So even though an orbital or wave function psi has no real physical meaning, its square, psi squared, is the probability density. Probability density. Okay, so what's that? The probability density is a measure of the probability or likelihood that an electron will occupy a certain region of space in an atom. Okay, So it's, it just gives us the likelihood of where an electron might be in an atom. So these probability densities can be depicted in electron probability density diagrams, which is what the next video is about. Okay, So basically what's happening here? We're talking about Schrodinger's equation, wave functions, and the atomic orbital. So essentially, we start with Schrodinger's wave equation, and that is solved. And the solutions give you the wave functions, or the orbitals. Okay? And if we square the f wave function, or the orbital, we square it, we get the probability density of an electron. Okay? Again, which tells us the likelihood that an electro electron will occupy a certain region of space in an atom. So I hope that video was helpful with a sort of overview of what's going on with Schrodinger's equation, how that applies to wave functions in the atomic orbital. So we'll see what's going on in these electron probability density diagrams in the next video. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you, and happy studying.